How would you like to have an almost infinite capacity computer hard drive? I imagine you recognize why this would be useful. The following video presents a technique to implement a very large virtual disk without resorting to costly uh, network attached storage hardware or flimsy storage spaces software. For example, it allows accessing files and folders physically located on a D drive via a path from your C drive convincing your computer that the folders are actually on drive C for both reading and writing. This discussion centers on the photo processing database application Lightroom, but the concept is universally applicable. Your imagination will undoubtedly reveal other applications for nearly bottomless hard drive storage. This technique describes how such links are created. My solution to this situation is a command built into Windows 7 through 10 named MakeLink, M-K-L-I-N-K. MakeLink makes a link that's stored on one drive and points to a folder on another. Using the junction switch convinces Windows that the link pointing to another drive is actually a folder on the original drive. So logically writing to that folder physically writes the data to the second drive. Likewise, reading from that junction reads data from the second drive. The junction link itself resembles a shortcut and is very small, only a few kilobytes. A single one of these links may call a folder on the other drive that contains multiple subfolders. This allows nearly unlimited disk C storage for your computer. You need multiple large physical drives for the actual file storage, but your computer treats them all as an extension of one logical drive. In use, your main drive, for example, your C drive, contains links to one or more separate physical drives. Programs on your computer believe that those separate drives are subfolders of the main drive with the same name as the link. The benefits are several. Importantly, the cost is free, except for the additional drives, of course. Setup only takes minutes. Loss of one drive does not corrupt the files on the other drives. Files on the additional drives are unencrypted and are accessible either via the link or via their normal physical paths. There's no apparent speed penalty, and making these links does not capture the entire drive. Other disks may be used as linked additional storage as well as general purpose storage. There's no need to reserve an amount of space for the linked storage. And disk overhead required is tiny, just a few kilobytes for the link, and that link is only located on the calling drive. There are a couple of drawbacks I've found. A new link must be generated for each new main folder but not for additional subfolders. The target folder must be a separate folder, not a continuation of a folder on the calling drive. This limitation will become clear within the example. Lightroom users know that the program is not as fast as we'd like. Bringing up photo previews and selecting, reviewing, and deleting photos takes several seconds each. One of my sins is the inability to decisively pare down my photo catalog as I lack the patience to wait while each photo loads before finally popping into sharp focus, or the lack thereof. The result is several hundred thousand photos in my catalog. A fast desktop PC with an NVMe solid-state C drive helps, but these drives are expensive and only have relatively low storage capacity. I keep the Lightroom program and its catalog on this fast drive, while the several hundred thousand raw files live on a mechanical hard disk drive. On my system, this is the ePhotos drive, and was until recently of 10 terabyte capacity. 4K video and Nikon D850 raw files filled this drive earlier in the year, and I began storing new raw files onto the D drive, which I was using for general purpose computing, and supplemented the small solid state C drive for less speed critical programs and my general documents. Upon implementing this, I broke the ability for Lightroom to search and find earlier photos while I was working in the D drive, or newer photos when working in the E drive, even though all of these photos were in the same catalog. It was apparent that this was a poor solution that would get more irritating with time. The quickest solution was brute force, simply buy a larger hard drive. The price premium per terabyte of a 16 terabyte drive, the largest presently available in the 3.5 inch desktop format, was accepted, and I got one. This kicked the can down the road for a while. Meanwhile, 4K video and huge D850 RAW files kept accumulating, and poor file culling continued, so even the big 16 terabyte drive's size limitation was in sight. Now we'll show MakeLink in action. 
I'll use my laptop, a gamer special with both an NVMe C drive and a 1TB solid state D drive. So we all start out on the same page. Let's make sure your Confuser is set up to run Command Prompt instead of PowerShell. If you're using Windows 10, one of the first things you need to do is use the Command Prompt to get the traditional DOS commands rather than PowerShell. So what we do is we have to deal with settings and personalization, taskbar, and turn off PowerShell. That should do it. Now when we go over here and right click, we get the regular command prompt with the traditional commands. So I can get a directory and everything just works. We have most of our files in C photos, but since we're running out of room, we want to bring some to the D drive. And so what I've done is uh, broken up the files by year. And so the new files for 2018 and 2019 are on the D drive. Now, in order to get them to be virtually on the C drive so they can all be sorted at the same time, we need to make a link. We go to the Start menu, Command Prompt, and go back to the root. And now we're in the the C photos directory and now it's time to make the link the command is mklink and those are the parameters for it I already know what I want is to create a link from C photos uh, 2018 to D photos 2018 you notice that C Photos 2018 doesn't exist yet. On the D drive, it does. The target is on the D drive, and the source is a link that will be placed here in C photos. So the command mklink slash j for a junction and C photos. 2018 and then the target D photos 2018 now these names could be anything I chose these because they make sense to me and when I'm looking through the disk I know exactly what is what so there's the junction and it just appeared here get the properties for that and we see that Windows considers this a file folder for some reason. God only knows why. Um, if we do a directory in the DOS window, it is listed as a junction, which it rightfully is. Assuming we have several of these to make, there are shortcuts to keep you from typing. If you hit the F1 key, and tap it a few times. You can get to the point where you want to make the change. So I typed F1 up to this point. Now I'll hit 9. And I hit F3 and then backspace hit 9. And so there's our new command line which is exactly what I want. And the new junction has just appeared. Now let's get ahead of ourselves here and make one for the new year. Again F1 a number of times. Two zero. Now I need to two zero. Now F three. Backspace twice. Two zero. Enter. And so now we have three links that are showing up in the C drive. Uh, notice that we only have two in the D drive because I don't have a folder named 2020. Uh, make link allowed us to make the link, but it, it links to nothing at the present time because its target doesn't exist yet, but we'll deal with that in a minute. 
Okay, let's get a directory and, and see what we've done. And there are all of the folders and the junctions. Now that our links are completed, we will close the DOS window and let's check them out. If I double click in the C window, double click the link, it says C Windows Photos 2018. Notice C Windows Photos 2018. And here it says D Photos 2018. Both folders are presently empty. Let's fix that. Uh, go to some of my favorite pictures. I'll copy this into the D drive, the actual physical drive. And it's there. Uh, we'll go back to this one and we'll hit F5 to refresh. And there it is. I don't, uh, as you see, Windows is playing games with us. It was set to details, but it showed an icon. Who knows? But it is the same file. Uh, let's view these in large icons so we get a little consistency. Now let's do it the other way around. Let's copy a file into the link and watch it appear on the actual drive. And so there it is. Again, the key point here is it says Windows C Photos 2018 actually is in D Photos 2018. And I should be able to open either file in either position. Do one from each, and they're both opening. Fortunately, no surprises. Thank you, Windows. Yes, I am surprised. Uh, notice we've made a link to folder 2020, but the actual target doesn't exist. What happens? It tells us it's unavailable. That makes sense. Now we will demonstrate how Lightroom works with the links. I've started a new catalog uh, called it Video Make Link because, well, I'm just so creative. And what we need to do is go to Drive C and Photos and let's import everything in C. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of photos there. Uh, let's see, I want to go to C, Photos 2018, 2017, 2016. Okay, in 2018, 2019, even though the files in 2018 and 2019 are not on the disk, Lightroom found them immediately through the link, and they're now imported into this new catalog. Even better, if I wanted to search, I can, uh, well, let's see, what do we have for uh, attribute? Okay, Astro. This also would be Astro, wouldn't it, as a solar eclipse? Now we have our photos in our test catalog. Uh, notice this one has a, a tag of Astro. And notice that in the 2018 folder, which is actually on drive D, this folder, this, both of these also have a keyword of Astro. If we go and do a search, which was our main purpose for doing this in the first place, for all photos that have the keyword of Astro, I expect to find the files both on the C drive and on the D drive now that they're linked. And sure enough, there they are. This is in C 2014. This is in D 2018. Lightroom doesn't know the difference. While it's straightforward to make a link for each new download from the camera, this is not necessary. Add the new download as a subfolder to an already linked folder, and that subfolder will also be linked. Lightroom will let you import the photos in that subdirectory without issue. I have now copied a file of photographs into a new folder called 2020. And now let's see if the link works. Hey, there it is. It's actually working. Now let's go into Lightroom and import these photos. 2020 appears. 
just as if it's on the C drive. Boom, 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 here they are. We're going to call this one Astro just for the heck of it, just to show you that it shows up in a search. So let's go back into photos and let's do that search again. And I want keywords and Astro. And there it is. This is the, the photo taken in the future. Something critically important is that these links are not just from one folder to a single other folder. The link will also find subfolders of that target folder. For example, our catalog right now has two photos in the 2018 directory. But if we import into Lightroom and look at 2018, we see that there are a number of other folders there, uh, each one containing many photos. So we do have proper organization here. And if we let Lightroom import those folders, the directory structure will be maintained. With Bakelink, my 16 terabyte E drive, 10 terabyte F drive, plus junctions between them for each year's new photos, I'm future proof for a while. Once that 26 terabytes is filled, a new G drive could be purchased and junctions from E to G written. My laziness and unwillingness to review and purge all of those bad photos has a solution at a price I'm willing to pay.